I'll, we have a sequencer in the Eurorack system. It is this metropolis. Uh, some of you have made reference to the blinking lights, okay? So if you saw the blinking lights in the Eurorack when you were uh, either watching earlier demos or when you were in the studio with this, that is the sequencer, okay? Uh, what it is doing, the, the lights are blinking in time to move through the eight stages of this sequencer, okay? It has eight stages, but you can actually have it repeat, um, you can actually change how it moves through the, the, the stages. I'll get to that maybe a little bit later, but just to cover some of the basic operations, um, the, the, the main thing to get come away with this is the difference between control signals and audio signals, okay? This device only generates control signals, okay? If you plug it into the outputs directly, you're not gonna be happy with the results. You're just gonna hear a little bit of clicking. In fact, let's do that. So take the green out of here, remove the yellow here, and I'll turn it up carefully. Let's see. Can we hear it? Oh, I don't have it changing anything. Okay, that's the signal it's generating of pitch changes, okay? Pretty disappointing, yes? Okay, unless you needed a pattern sequencer basically, but because it's not meant to be listened to, okay? It's meant to be a control signal, so go ahead and remove that, okay? Uh, and now I'm starting with a few patch cables already in. I've got a link in my notes to this patching configuration that's, our, that's starting things up. So I've got, a, I've got a still picture that I tweeted out this morning that is linked in my notes of like how to connect these two things and I carefully uh, picked different colors so it's easier for you to lo look at this and, uh, on playback and see how they're connected, okay? Um, but we have the Metropolis generating both pitch for us and gate information, okay? The gate Let's see, the pitch is going into the oscillator here so that as we make changes to this sequence, it will modulate the pitch. So go ahead and create a little like uh, triangle going up and down. All right, everybody hear how it's modulating the pitch now? Okay. Um, that is going into the synthesizer box in the one uh, volt per octave input. So basically, the way that it no the way that the um, synthesizer knows what pitch to play is because they've standardized the signal by by saying that every one volt change is a, a another octave in the overall synthesizer playback. Okay. Now, there is some interaction that happens between these two units in that you can still change the frequency knob to kind of change the, the, the uh, shall we say, the, the root of the chord or the, the tonic, if you will. So go ahead and change that. Okay. So know that there is some interaction between this and this. Okay. Uh, if you are someone who... Uh, you know, needs to know exactly, if you have perfect pitch and you need to know exactly which, which pitch it is basically, uh, I can hit this root button here and it's telling me that this should be on a C. This does not sound like it's in a C. I don't know, I, I don't have perfect pitch. So is anybody out there? That's not a C. That's not a C? Okay, can we just agree that it's not going to be in the right key at this point? Okay, but if you needed to, if you needed it to, to truly reflect what the controls are on the panel, you could sit here and fiddle with this and adjust it till you get it in key, okay? Um, now, we, first up in terms of control, it's going pretty darn fast right now. So I want to change the BPM. You see there's a BPM button down here, yes? Click that and it will display the BPM. You can use the center yeah, knob to change the BPM. Go ahead and slow it down for me. This makes it easier to hear the stages, basically. And you see how they're blinking slow, more slowly, visually giving you feedback, but it's now playing the, sequ the sequence at a slower pace, OK? Um, now, we have these continuous sliders adjusting the pitch. So if I decide that I want to change the sequence somehow, like, you know, maybe Maybe I want it to go down, then back up. 
Everybody hear how it changed the results? OK. Um, the main thing, uh, feel free to play around with the sliders there, basically. They're, they're, they're continuous sliders, OK? So it's not like it locks into the next pitch and the next pitch and the next pitch, OK? So it's going to be continuously moving up and down. But you kind of create the shape that you want of your melodic sequence, OK? Uh, and the other thing that's fun about it is that you, know, you could be changing step seven while it's playing back steps one through four. So like, go ahead and slow the BPM way down. OK, and so I can be making changes down here while it's playing over here. And you're not going to hear those changes until it gets to that step in the sequence. OK, so you have to disconnect in your mind. Um, let's see, it's almost, it's almost like playing in non-real time. It's not like playing at a piano, playing at an instrument where you have a one-to-one -one correlation between action and note, action and note, right? The action has a delayed effect. Because if I change this slider here while it's playing over here, I'm not going to hear it till it comes back around. Okay, so now you're—it's almost like you're composing in real time. Okay, you're you're anticipating changes, making changes that can happen in the future of your your uh, sequence overall. Okay, um, so.